Hallelujah. Now, I don't, I don't usually do church sermon titles. Like, that's not my thing. Uh, but I try to be obedient to the Lord. And so when God brings something to me, I try, I try my hardest to be obedient and do what he tells me to do. So he gave, he gave me a, a title today. Now, I just want you to know that the title came, you know, just being a leader and being in the body of Christ and, you know, just online and stuff that I do online and just kind of watching people kind of like, like a hamster wheel. Just like Groundhog's Day, living the same year over every year. Not even day, just year. And I'm like, okay, God, I just want to help people because one of the things I'm starting to realize is that frustrated people are people, people who are in depression are people who are not executing. I used to think it was like a medical thing. And I realized like, nah, 90% of the people who are depressed is not like a chemical imbalance. There's nothing wrong with their brain. They're not executing, they're getting frustrated. It, they have ideas and dreams and goals and they're not coming to pass. Or they're not coming to pass in the way they envisioned they would come to pass. Praise God. And so as I'm like studying, like what's going on, God help me to help my people because, you know, again, like I told you, I didn't grow up in church, so I'm not really interested in church being a place of attendance, somewhere that we go regularly. I look at church as a place that you come in the presence of God and then you leave changed. And that every time you come, it's some blessing you get. Amen. I just believe that church shouldn't just be like you, you checking off the box. But like it should really be a transformational experience. Why? Because every time I read the word and somebody got in Jesus' presence, something happened. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Like when I read the Bible, Bible like not what people talk about. When I read the Bible, Bible, and I look in the word, anytime somebody touched Jesus or Jesus touched them, something happened. The only place where I find Jesus being and nothing happened is the church. <laughs> like that, I'm just being real. That's the only time, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that's the only time you actually find Jesus like physically present with a group of people and nothing happened. And so I don't want APOC to be that. Why? Because it's called a place of change. So every time we come, Something should change. Uh, Joseph and I was talking this morning. He was, how you doing? I'm like, I'm blessed, bro. Like, I don't got a lot of time left. Now, maybe when I was 20, I didn't have a lot left either, but I know I ain't have it. Now at 53, I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't got a lot of time left. And when you realize you don't have a lot of time left, you just move differently. There's a sense of urgency, and everything you touch, you want it to be meaningful. Oh, come on. Y'all missed what I said. We, I was with Didi in Orlando. I had to speak in Orlando for this conference, and one of our favorite uh, Caribbean restaurants is in Tampa. And so I was like, yo, Didi, you want to go? And Didi was like, ah, oh, that's like an hour and five ride. You know, that's an hour and five minutes. And that don't, that, like, that's if something don't happen. If it's an accident or something, it could take an hour and a half. It could take two hours, like, just for us to go get our favorite jerk chicken and our favorite rice and peas. <laughs> right? And I said to Didi, I said, Didi, I'm not trying to be funny. We're going to die. Like, what else are we doing? She's like, well, we go to your house. I'm like, but like your house don't give you the same, like your taste buds don't jump like they do when we go to Jerk Hunt. I, I just want y'all to hear what I'm saying. And I just said to my wife, like, yo, we don't got nothing else to do. We're going to die. Let's, let, why don't we enjoy ourselves? It's an hour drive. We could talk and worship on the way. Somebody's missing what I'm saying. I'm saying, why be in church if it's not going to be blissful? Why come here if nothing's going to change? Like, why just keep showing up for no reason? Huh? Like, just stay at home. But if you're going to come here and God has the ability to take your life to another level, why wouldn't you leverage it? Praise God. So we went to jerk. <laughs> we went to jerk hut. <laughs> and I took a plane home. <laughs> Amen. I said, I want this. Oh, this tastes so good. I want this for tomorrow when I wake up. Anybody ever had something you wanted for the next day? I, I, want, I want it for tomorrow. Hallelujah. I want to wake up to this. Amen. And I ain't even got to eat it at eight. I, wanna, I just want to, I just feel good knowing it's in the refrigerator. <laughs> I just feel good knowing that joke is right. Anytime I'm ready to get it, it's right there. Are you listening to me? That's the kind of experience we can have with God. Praise God. Amen. And so do me a favor. Like don't, don't. Hey, and don't torture your kids. I know I'm a pastor, and I'm supposed to be preaching about God and religion. Do me a favor. Don't torture your kids. Don't make them read the Bible if they ain't feeling it. Don't do that to them. 
Because when they get to the point where they can feel it, then they don't want to deal with God no more. Don't, don't bring them to church if they don't want to come to church. Don't, don't, bring them to play, don't bring them somewhere where it's transformational, but they're not getting transformed. Because then when they get 30, they're just going to see it as a place that you just come to. Don't do them like that. Like, don't, don't do them like that. Like, I know we do the gentle parenting, but back in the day when my grandma, if you didn't want to eat at her table, you didn't have to eat at her table. Grandma, like, if you don't want, I, look, I'm telling y'all, my grandma wasn't forcing you to eat. But if you, if you sat at the table, you was going to eat, amen, and you was going to say you're grateful. My grandma's philosophy was if he don't want to eat, let him stay outside. He going to get hungry. And when he get hungry, he going to enjoy. Stop forcing people to do spiritual stuff because then they get tired of it. And then when they get old enough to actually do it, they don't want to do it no more. Make them thirst for this. Make them hungry for this. Huh? This is the best stuff you're going to get in the world. Make them want to drive an hour and 15 for this. Don't, don't push it in their face. If they don't want it, don't force them to take it. This should be this is, this is, this is an enjoyed experience. This is like the Ritz-Carlton. You ain't got to force nobody to come. They want to spend their money at the Ritz. Huh? Y'all not hear what I'm saying? Diddy woke up one day and was like, we ain't even standing at the Ritz. They had us at the very high. Diddy was like, let's go to the Ritz and get that fish sandwich. I'm like, y'all not hear what I'm saying? We drove all the way to the Ritz Carlton Park and paid for parking. Got, gave him a tip so we can get, like, stop forcing people to do this. Don't force nobody. You ain't got to force nobody to do this. Make, wait until they want this. Don't, don't make them, don't force them into this. This thing is rich. Hallelujah, so I'm gonna get to the word, amen. And remember, I'm not preaching to preach. I'm preaching to help you to execute and to live the life that God called you to live. And there's no reason for us not to live the full life that God has called us to live. Absolutely no reason not to, amen? Amen, so I'm telling y'all, it's crazy. So here's the sermon title gave me. Don't forget to write down, what do you want? God gave me this. He said, tell my people you gonna die broke, Chances are there's nothing you can do to stop it. Praise God. Now I got to bless me because, you know, uh, CJ get on me all the time and I'm trying to do better with the way I communicate. But sometimes, you know, it's in my brain. Like my brain goes so fast. I be saying stuff. I know what I mean. So I thought you knew what I meant. That's just the way my brain worked. Like I, I wasn't a good writer and I didn't realize I wasn't a good writer, not because I couldn't write. I wasn't a good writer because the way my brain worked, it goes so fast and the writing was so slow that I would mess up by the time I would write it. It's go so fast it just, and it didn't come out and people wouldn't understand. And so I text and it's like people don't know. And so God said, you got to slow down and so make sure they get you. Amen. Right. And so I've been hearing people like all you talk about is money. You keep talking about broke. And I'm like, shoot, I'm sorry. You, I didn't mean broke. You took it the wrong way. I should have said broken. I apologize. That's what I meant to say. I thought you was catching it. I thought, I thought by my life, you know I ain't talking about money. I'm trying to be funny. I, I just knew you wouldn't think I was talking about I live in Grand Ledge. I know you wouldn't think I was think about, talking about money. <laughs> I live in Grand Ledge. I didn't think I had to explain to you that I'm not about money. I live around the corner, and I'm a multimillionaire. I just knew you didn't think I would think about money. I don't have to live in Grand Ledge. I don't have to be in Lance and preaching to 20 some people. <laughs> I can have a mega church in any big city. I would just, I thought you knew what I meant when I said broke. I meant broken. You're going to die broken. There's probably nothing you can do about it. I'm just being real, chances are nothing you can do about it. And this is why parents, I'm telling y'all, be careful. Why? Because our babies don't do what we bring them to church to do. They do what they see. And most of them don't even do what they see. So we really got to be at another level because they're not even like they're going to see some stuff act like they don't see it. There's <laughs> some stuff they're going to be exposed to and they're not even going to realize what they're exposed to. So we got to be at a super high level just so they can get at a, a medium level. Our babies are probably going to live in the city that we, that we live in, not the city we want them to live in. They're probably going to end up doing most of the stuff that we do. So be careful that you fix your brokenness. That's what I meant to say. I'm sorry. When I said money and you ain't see money on me, I thought you would know what I was talking about. I apologize. I'm not, I'm not talking about you're going to die broke because you're going to die broke, period. You can't take your money with you. But you're going to die broken, meaning what you could have done with your character while you were alive, you didn't do. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Thank you, CJ. 
for the podcast and teasing me about communication. So I try to, like every time I preach, I'm like, oh, e, you got to do a better check. I'm making sure. So some of you are broken. Let, I, want, I want to show you something real quick when I use the word chances. I just want to show you this next image, right? It's like a pair of J's. Church is like a pair of Jordans. You know, kids buy the J. When kids play basketball, they normally in the J's. No disrespect. But most kids aren't wearing the Tim Duncan's. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he won five championships and considered Mr. Fundamental, they're not wearing his shoe. Most kids really, believe it or not, I know you don't want to hear this, but most kids aren't wearing, uh, like on the earth, most kids aren't wearing Kobe's. And there are a few kids, perhaps, that's wearing the LeBron's. But for the most part, when a kid thinks about a level of excellence in basketball, they're wearing the Jays. But I want to share something with you real quick because these shoes remind me of the Jordans. Watch this next one. Although these shoes are specifically engineered to improve players' performance on the basketball court, chances are you'll just end up looking real cool wearing the shoes. I'm just being real. Like, if you get the J, you're probably just going to look cool. <laughs> you're probably not going to be like Mike. I'm just being real. For most of us coming to church, chances are you're just going to end up looking like a Christian. You're not going to experience the stuff that Christians are supposed to experience. You're just going to look like a Christian. You're just going to talk like a Christian. You're just going to act like, but you're not going to get the rewards of a Christian. And what I'm trying to do is get rid of this chance and stuff. Get rid of this. You checking off the box. Other people know you Christian. Like that. That like we got to get. We got to be get over that. We start. We need the results of Christians. We need the results of people who are connected to Christ. Hallelujah. And what I'm starting to realize is that every part of my life is an indicator of what I really believe, not what I say I believe. Amen. So I'm going to show y'all how God fixed me. Let's go to the word. Second Chris. I know. I know it's some of y'all like, man, he just spoke five minutes in, uh, out there. And he ain't gave the scripture yet. I apologize. I just, I just want to make it work for you. Not just we just going through the motions. In 2 Corinthians 13 verses 5 through 10, we'll just do a couple of them. He, he says, examine yourself. Amen. Now this, I'm not preaching, you know, for you to be pumped up or for you to feel good. I'm not trying to inspire you today. I want you to actually take the scripture and apply it in its specific context. He said, examine yourself. Now, to me, that seems real simple. But one of the things that I realized as a leader and being around other humans that we do most, most of our examining is examining others. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going, I can't tell you how many sessions I've been in, marriage sessions, I can't tell you how many uh, 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 counseling sessions, I can't tell you how many times I've been around individuals and they do examine and they examine well. I'm going to be real. When I first read this, I was like, yeah, step one is we need to examine. God's like, no, you don't. Y'all already examine it. The problem is you're not following the scripture. The scripture says examine yourself. Like, this is where we going wrong. Most of us, we got, we're doing a lot of examining. For some of us, it's called gossip. We're doing a lot of gossiping. We're doing a lot of it, examining others and their motives and why they ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing. But the Bible is clear. He says, examine yourself to see. I'm not trying to be deep. I'm just, can, I, can I help somebody? So step one, God is saying, you got to start examining yourself so you can see whether you are in the... Amen. Test yourself. Number one, examine yourself. Number two, as you examine yourself, test yourself. Amen. And God told me, God said, I brought, I brought this. This is coming on fancy stuff. I just asked for a lever. Jamie didn't brought the, le the laser boy. This is like some AI. This one right here is like some AI right here. This is the basic one that most of us use. This is what you use when you're in construction. Now, I'm talking to somebody today. Lever, when you get a chance at home, go buy you one. After this sermon, go on Amazon Prime and get one as quick as you can. Bring it to the house. God showed me, son, if you examine your life, the areas where you use the level, you're good. The areas where you don't, you're struggling. No, I'm talking to somebody. We could just leave right now. I promise you we can leave right now. And there, there are those of you like me, you put some up in your house and it ain't level, but you, just, you looked at it with your eye. It was like, that looked good. Amen. 
Have it look at something with your eye, then when you put that, then the dude come from the Geek Squad. You ever notice the Geek Squad, when they put it up, they use this? Have you ever put something up before and you put this on, that joke on your eye looks straight. That thing was like, that boy was like that. The, 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 the middle part, the air bubble boy wasn't nowhere. You couldn't even find it on it, but you just knew. And, that, and what God is showing me is you have to examine yourself because you have to test yourself. Why? Because if you examine yourself with this, amen, which is the word of God, you're going to always get the same results. When you start doing stuff in your life without this, you start getting different results. And now you're mad because, and God said, you ain't even had to do all that. You could have just put my word on it. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Watch this. So I want to show you something real quick. So my son broke his femur. I think he was in the eighth grade. He broke his femur. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. They, he broke his femur. My boy was in pain. My boy was in pain. But, and and uh, although he was in pain, they did absolutely nothing for him. The very first thing they did was put him through the x-ray. Somebody talk back to me. I'm watching my baby boy. I'm watching him suffer. I'm watching him in pain. I, I want them to do something about it. And the very first thing that they do is they say, we got, we, exact, my man leg broke. We don't know where, how it's broke. He going through it. I want you to fix this. We need to, and the very first thing they have to do is take him to the x-ray. We can't, we can't do nothing to him based on what we see on the external. We can't give him nothing based on what's on, how he feel. Oh, I'm talking. I'm talking to somebody. We can't give him a treatment because his mama crying and his mama hurt. We can't do nothing because his daddy feels helpless. We can't do nothing to do. We do an x-ray. We have to examine his femur to see what's wrong. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking, the doctor didn't go, uh, how Eric feeling about his son femur? How's Didi feeling about the doctor say, we, we got to examine Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking, I want you to go buy one of these, and every time you have a situation in your house, I just want you to, amen. Every time you have a situation at your job, I just want you to. And I don't want you to look at it, and I don't want you to feel no way about it. I want you to. And when, them, when that bubble line up in the <laughs> When that bubble line up, then you walk away. I'm trying to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, this is one of the most tragic things that ever happened in our life up to that point. And they took my son as painful as it was. They didn't care what he was going through. They took that boy inside and gave him an x-ray. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. We went to Oakwood. So praise God. Moni went to Oakwood. We have a relationship. She happened to be uh, at the hospital when she went and got that and said, here's my recommendation based on what I just saw. Amen. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. Amen. As a matter of fact, the doctor told me, she said, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't follow that because if you do the wrong thing, one leg going to be sh uh, shorter than the other one. He might end up having to wear a special shoe and it may never fix. This is critical. And so, and so based on what I see with Jalen and his feet, it's like a T-bone based on if he's ever going to be right, there's a chance he won't be right. If he's ever going to be right, not only do you have to do X, Y, and Z, you need this doctor to do it. <laughs> she told me, uh-uh, don't, uh-uh. That was the doctor that was at work at the time when he got sick. Uh, somebody missed what I said. That was the doctor that was available. Don't go to him. I want you to go to the doctors that the NBA, I'm sorry, but the Michigan State basketball team go to when something happened to them. I want you to go with a football player. This is his name. Tell him I sent you. Yo, I'm talking to somebody. Your life is messed up because you hadn't been using the... Mm, you've been using what your mama told you. <laughs> and I know you love your mama, but break away from a guy bigger than your mama. I know you love your daddy, but God's bigger than your daddy. God, God's lever was here before your daddy got here. God, God, God's lever was here before your mama got here. God's lever was here before your pastor got here. God's lever was before your counselor got here. Praise God, I'm talking to somebody. So let's go, let's go. I want to show y'all something real quick. Examine yourself. Watch this, let's go to the next one. The, the first step to change is being honest about what you actually value. So we're going so we to examine and then once we examine, we're going to figure out, okay, here's the truth. Stop fighting against your own values. Take inventory of you. That's why he said examine yourself, test yourself. So here's a word that, I, that, that, that best uh, fits me. It's the word, the definition is unkept. 
Amen. Praise God. I remember I was, I remember I was fighting. It was killing my marriage. You know, my wife is very kept. I'm unkept. It was killing. And I was doing this for and then doing this. And God said, you ain't, you ain't going to never meet her standards. You're killing yourself, son. You can't lever that. You can't. You're killing yourself, son. Well, here's what I need you to do. Because Didi will be like, you did this and you that and you unkept and you unkept and you unkept and you unkept. And I'll be like, I ain't unkept. And God say, son, I just can't wait till you just stop lying and just admit that you unkept. <laughs> Come on, son. You're trying to. What you're doing, you're going to fail because you're trying to live up to her values and her standards. You unkept. Okay, this is how I know I was unkept, y'all. This is how I know I was unkept, right? So if you come to my crib, I promise you, you come to my house, 90% of the time, you come to my house, you open up the door, you look through the crib, like all the, all the spaces where uh, you can see. You just, I'm talking about minimalist DDS. I'm talking about no tables, no chair. I'm talking about everything is neat. The floor is sweat. The kitchen, she don't even have a thing where you can put the dishes inside. The dish. You got to wash the dishes, dry them, and put them up. It's the craziest thing. There's nowhere to sit them until you feel like cleaning them, you know what I'm saying? Or you want to clean them but not put them up. Like, there's no place for that. I promise you, you walk in, it's like immaculate, right? But this is how I knew. I say, E, you a liar. Because every place that's your place that people can't see, it's... I went in the basement to go get something to, about a week or two ago, and I, was, I didn't even have nowhere to walk. And I was like, yo, E, you, you unkept having an untidy or disheveled appearance. And you know what I realized? I realized I ain't even trying to be clean. I realized what I'm trying to do is look clean in front of people so I can please people. And God said you ain't going to never be clean because you're not trying to be clean. You're trying to please. Uh, you ain't going to never be clean because you're about your image. You ain't going to never be clean because you want people to think a certain way about you. You can't be clean because you're not even trying to be clean. Examine yourself. You're not trying to be clean. You're trying to please people. So there's no way for you to be clean because that's not the goal in the first place. Your goal ain't to be clean. Your goal is not to get on Didi's nerve. Your goal is not to have Didi mad at you. That's your goal. Your goal is not to interrupt intimacy. You don't care nothing about cleaning. If she never said nothing to you, you'd never clean it. I went downstairs in the basement, was climbing up stuff. I ain't had no issues. I just was like, I got to get over there. I got to get over there. Okay, I know I put this stuff somewhere. <laughs> okay, there it go right there. I got to shake it off. Okay. I don't care. I only care to the extent that my wife cares. God says, examine yourself. The reason why you're not further along is because you really don't value it. You really don't care about it. There's another reason why you're doing it. And as long as you're doing it for another reason outside of the real reason, you're never going to. Let's go to the next one. I, I just had to be honest. And one day I just woke up, looked myself in the mirror, said, untidy, embrace it, Eric. <laughs> Messy, scruffy, windblown, ungroomed. I'm like, this you right here, bro. Just embrace it. I, my wife, like, you ain't put on deodorant. Mm-mm. You grown, you ain't got to, mm -mm, I ain't going to put on no deodorant. It's got to be real. I'm walking in the store. They giving me the cologne. You want cologne? I'm saying, boy, I don't even wear deodorant. I just had to tell the lady. She was trying to track me down. Like, perfume. We got the new fragrance. I was like, boo, I got to do deodorant first. I don't, I don't need to do deodorant. You try to get me to put on cologne. Like, I'm good on that. I'm just being real. This is disheveled, this scruffy, this, this arranged. That's me. And God said, you ain't going to never change until you admit it. Ain't nothing going to change until you admit it and stop trying to do it for Didi. Or one of y'all called me like, E, I'm coming over. I'm, I want to come downstairs in the basement. I'm like, all right, give me 30. <laughs> and I'm moving everything so when you come down, you won't go, my pastor untidy, my pastor messy. My pastor, what a wind blew through here on my past. Well, I can't believe this. He ungroomed. I ain't know he smelled like that. He ain't never been that close. That's why he, he this shot. He's scruffy. But the day I was like, you know what, God, let me examine myself. It's real. Let me examine myself. You're right, God. I don't, I communicate in my head and I use common nouns, not proper nouns. I, I, this is how I communicate for me. And it worked for me. And God was like, that's cool. As long as you're doing something for you. But once you're doing it for somebody else, then you're going to have to switch up game. 
Uh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. I want, okay, so we about to get, we about to keep going, but I want to stop here. I'm gonna give you four steps real quick. When my son, when my son broke his femur, listen to me very closely. When my son broke his femur, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ, there's two things that I noticed. I noticed one, his mobility uh, was, 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 was uh, compromised. Hmm? His mobility was compromised. I just, I just, I saw a little spank. He just came in with the crutches on. He know how to run, he know, but he can't do it right now because his mobility is, I'm telling you, when you're broken, your mobility is compromised. My son couldn't, he couldn't take a bath like he used to take a bath. He, a certain thing, he, when he first hit it, it's some things we had to do. I, he used to be in pain. He would cry out, can I get another, can I get a, he couldn't cook the way he used to cook. He couldn't go to school. He sat in, that, he sat in at least a month. He, he wasn't even in his bedroom. Unfortunately, it was upstairs, so he had to sleep on the couch. I'm telling you that those of you, you broken, your mobility is compromised. His mobility was compromised. Everything about his life was disrupted. And there are those of you, you like, oh, I ain't tripping in my daddy went in my life. You are. You broken. And there's certain parts of your life you killing it. There's certain parts of your life you broke. You need to go get an examination, and then you need to go get some help. You broke. You broke. And it's all that one area that you broke in, it just keeps spilling all over. Jalen, Jalen, Jalen broke his leg. Jalen was broke, broken, and he couldn't move the way he moved. He couldn't go to school and he couldn't play with his kids. All he could do is sit on that couch and watch TV and play games and do his homework. He was broke. There are those of you, when I say you broke, I wasn't talking about money. You broke. You are broken. And, and in order for Jalen to get healed, he had to go and get surgery. He had to go get physical therapy. You've been broken 20 some years. You still ain't to see a doctor. You still ain't got no x-ray. You've been broken. You, still, you, you are still limited. You are still, your mobility is still compromised. Who you is as a person, you, yeah, you have this one area. Now his other leg worked and his other arms worked and his brain worked and his eyes worked. But as long as his femur was broken, it compromised the rest of his body. You are compromising your relationships. You compromising your money. Why? Because there's one area of your life that's broken. Yeah, and you refuse to do anything about it. Oh, praise God. We had to go get that boy an x-ray. Then we had to talk to Moni. And then we went to the best physician. And they told us that we still can't guarantee you nothing. But by the grace of God, he went through therapy. And I remember he told Spain, he said, Spain, let me tell you something. Everything cool right now. But when you start going to therapy, it's going, it's, it's going, it's going. But the therapy is not meant to break you. The therapy is, the therapy is meant to make. And some of y'all running from therapy. You running from the pain that's going to fix you. Yeah, you broken, so it don't hurt no more. You broke. You already severed it, but you broke, but it ain't, but you don't want to go to physical therapy because you don't want to do the work, amen, to walk again. But I'm telling you, the boy not only walking again, amen, he had a growth spurt because I promise y'all, if you look at the leg that was broke versus the leg that wasn't broke, the leg that was broke was stronger than the leg that was never broken. I'm telling you, you broke and you broke and you broke. And until you examine it and do something about it, you can't pray your way through broke. You broke, you got to fix it. You can't read the scripture through it. You got to fix it and examine yourself so you can test yourself and you and God can fix it. Your money ain't going to never be right. You broke. Your money, your bank account got something to do with where you're broken. When I fix my communication, I fix my bank account. When I fix my uncleanliness, I, I fix who I attract. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Let me preach today. I'm sorry. Let me preach. Let's go real quick. The four steps of increasing your chances so you just ain't wearing the J's to look good. Number one, examine yourself. Number two, be honest about the diagnosis. I can't tell you how long I fought with Didi. Don't, don't call me untidy. Don't call me messy. Who you think you are? I'm not untidy. God said, go downstairs, son. No, I'm just being real. We, 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 we put up so much defense about our brokenness that it's unreal. It's crazy. It's sick. We constantly trying to fight people when they bring, we don't want to examine it, so God brings people to you to show you, and you fight those people when they show you sick. You fight, you trying to, you trying to defend your broke. Why you, oh no, you don't understand. You don't get it. I don't, God not telling you you broke because he want to tell you you broke. He want to tell you your femur broke so you can walk again. You think, you think a career, going, you broke. Your career ain't going, you broke. Your career ain't about to mask it. Your degrees ain't about to mask it. You broke. Let me tell y'all something. 
I think one of the most devastating things I've ever seen in my life was my son's, my son's x-ray. When I know what a leg was supposed to look like and what his leg looked like. It was a T-bone, but guess what? You can't run from the x-ray. You can't run from what is. And no matter how painful it is, it is what it is. And once you examine yourself, then you, ex- you, you are honest about the diagnosis. You can admit your personal feelings. For most of us, we can't get healed because we're still in our feelings. We can't get healed because we're still in our personal perspectives. You can't get healed because you're still defending yourself. You can't get healed because you're still taking it personal. Nobody said, my wife says to me all the time, nobody says you're the worst human in the world. I just said when you communicate, I just don't always know what you're talking about. I don't understand. All I know is when I say something to you, it seems like you're defensive. We're on the same team. I'm trying to help you win. No, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I'm sitting in the audience and I'm watching people. I'm not telling you you can't speak. I'm just saying make this adjustment. Ain't nobody trying to hurt you. Ain't nobody against you. Some kind of way, something happened in your life when you were a child and you felt like some, everybody always against you. You got to fix that. I'm not against you. I'm for you. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you your breath don't stink. I'm not going to sit here and tell you not musty. Just because your feelings. I'm not going to do that. Now, they might do it. I'm not going to do it. Go. You can be as mad as me as you want to. Go take a shower and put on some deodorant this time. We're in first class and you smell like you just worked out. I said, I did. Well, you should have took a bath. I did. Well, you should have put on some deodorant. I did. You should put on acid spray. Press spray. You put on the wrong stuff. Don't get mad at me because I'm showing you you broke. I'm talking to somebody in the room. You, every time somebody tell you, you, you obviously broke it, you don't want to deal with it. Amen. Amen. Huh? You always want to just work on the areas you dope in. It's not the areas that you dope in that's keeping you from, it's the areas that you, all right, I got a real sermon I got to get to. I'm sorry. I got a real sermon I got to get to. I'm sorry. Number three, make the adjustments, the exam, uh, 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 the, uh, make the adjustments, then exam, examine the results. Make the adjustments. Make the adjustments. Go put on some deodorant. Make the adjustments. First of all, why don't you want to put on some? Make the adjustments. Okay, so if you think it caused cancer, get the one that don't cause cancer. Go get some lemons and put them on. Just do something. If you don't want the cancer, boy, go get lemon. Put the lemons on. Just do something. I'm not telling you you got to wear Old Spice. Get the lemon, boy. Does that work? (laughs) Do something. Huh? Make the adjustment. Number four, repeat the process. I want to show you all something God got on me. Even this week, God got on me. I'm going to show y'all something. God got on me. Just, just bear with me. God got on me. Just give me another 15 minutes. God, bear, God, 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 God. Let's do it. God, God, God told me, I want y'all to do this one. Stop waiting on God to give you a report card. Jamie, show me the report card real quick if we could. Take us to that one, then come back to this one. God told me every day when you wake up, grade yourself. Come on, come on, come on. I got something for y'all. I'm going to show some videos. Go back to that other one, Jamie. God got on me, y'all. God got on me this week. God got on me this week. We were in our APOC um, financial meeting, and uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, it was a statement that I heard. God uh, spoke through Linton, and God told me, lead. Lead. Man, God told me, lead. God said, I have somewhat against you. I said, God, what you got against me? He said, yo, your life in my church don't look the same. He said, I need you to examine yourself, son. You know why I don't look the same, don't you? I said, yep, I know why I don't look the same. He said, son, you see, let me tell you something. I'm so embarrassed. FedEx came out here to deliver a package or, were, or was concerned about delivering a package because the way the grass was, they thought it was abandoned. They've been coming here forever. The lady was like, whoa, they must be, they must, they must not be here no more. The grass is off. Look at the grass. That joker high. Can't nobody possibly be here with them kind of weeds. I'm getting on the elevator right now. I see the crack in the marble. It's just right there in the marble. God said, your house would never have a piece of marble cracked and you ain't fix it. Examine yourself, son. Why does my church look like? Matter of fact, God, he, he, he did it. I'm going to show you. Can you show me the, can you show, I'm going I'm to show you the lever and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to let y'all go, but y'all got to get this. Can you show my video? Jamie, I want, you to, I want you to show my video. God said in your own personal life, you got this joker. 
right there. And your own, God said in your own personal life, son, you put a lever up every single time. In your own personal life, you know what it takes to execute at the highest level, son. Be like that. You know how to... You ain't got no weeds in your perfect... You the top. What you saw there was the top of the top. You, you, you got this when it comes to speaking. You got this when it comes to the professional world. You, you, you know what the... Why, why is my church not what your... Let's go, to the, let's go to the next one. You can pick whichever one you want to pick. Not so look, man, I need y'all to do me a favor here. I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to imagine what the perfect life for you looks like. I want you to see it. I want you to see that business that you want to start. If it's a certain amount of money that you want, what does that look like? Before the world can see it, we need you to see it first. I, listen to me very closely. Jamal was a police officer. He's speaking the thought. I know exactly what the. God said, son, why are you using this on you, but you ain't using it on the church? My church don't look like. I'm, get, get, go, go ahead and give you the last one. Just give me. The we in the land of milk and honey. Italy, Italy. But ain't nothing sweet. These demons hungry. They go bananas for the money. But not me. I'm no circus monkey. It's crazy, it's crazy No shaitan can drown us, we waving Too smooth to be fooled by fugazis I guess that's all part of what may be Shine, 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 shine Shine on all of them Shine on all of them My only said to shine your light So shine on all of them I seen so many come and go It's hard to get change when you broke My only goal while on the globe Is not to let my soul corrode The world can be toxic Especially when your skin look like chocolate Be cautious, all branches ain't out And look towards the sun for your solace Shine, shine, shine Shine on all of them. Shine on all of them. My only said to shine the light. So shine on all of them. I mean, talk, talk. We in the talk, land of milk close. and honey. But ain't nothing sweet. These demons hungry. They go bananas for the money. Listen to me very closely, y'all. When I met Toby, to Toby didn't even know what he wanted to do with his life. Y'all can cut that for me. Tob didn't even know what he wanted to do with his life when I met him. Amen. But with Tob, it, it, it's the lever. We ain't playing no games. I said, why my church don't look like that? You know why my church don't look like that? Because you didn't turn it into a democracy. Amen. You know what the lever is, but because of what happened in your past, you don't want to hear that. You told people to do something. They got mad and church hurt, and they left. Amen. Amen. God, look at my church, son. Look at my church, son. You got people leading who they ain't even... My man Lynn was like, where's the vision? I'm like, God, you know I know the vision, but why I don't know the vision? Because I don't want to, a person get mad, then they leave the church. You know how it is, even during COVID, when I made some decisions, people mad, they gone. And God said, let them leave. Let them go. You ain't giving Toby that option, and look where he is. They in Italy. Look at Jamal, who was a nine to five. Boy, you know what to do. You don't do democracy in the world. You know what the standard is, and you make people live up to it. The church, you worry about somebody feeling. Let them go if they want to go. Why does everybody else's house and stuff look good, but mine don't? Why everything else you touch is blessed, but the church ain't? Why my church got to have cracks everywhere? Why my parking lot got to look like that? Because I don't want to say nothing to you because I don't want to get your, your little feelings hurt and then you leave. He said, let their feelings be hurt. What about my feelings? I took you to Abu Dhabi. You saw what that temple looked like. You walk through that temple. You walk through that Muslim temple. You saw them every time y'all walk. You saw them pushing the broom, and they, they didn't want your footprints on the temple. They got gold and diamonds and silver. But you don't want my church to look like because you don't want to get on nobody's nerve. Get on their nerve because you getting on mine. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You know how to lead. That's why you get offended when somebody say, you know how to lead. 
I don't got no problems with money. I got the right people on my money. But then I got people in the church on money who ain't ever done nothing with money before. And I let you do it because I don't want to get on your nerves. I ain't stupid. I'm not, I'm not, you, I was the only speaker for uh, Russell Brunson stuff. He ain't paid nobody else. I was the only speaker he paid. You don't get there being unorganized. You don't get there without having a vision. I got a vision. I just be scared here because if I put the vision on, you going to go. God said, let him go. I'd rather have five that's all in than uh, 400 that, that pity pattern. Lead. So what your mama got pregnant at 17? So what it hurt you when certain things happen and you don't want people to get hurt? It's okay. You got hurt and look where you are. They going to be all right. They going to be all right. If they leave and go to another church, they going to be all right. You ain't their God. I got them. Let them, let them be in their feelings. But you've allowed them to be in theirs and look at my church now. Look at my church. You got 20, 30 people. I don't go nowhere in the world where 20, 30 people, 20, 30 people show up. You can't take Eric Thomas nowhere else and it look like this in the auditorium. Only in a place where I'm not leading it look like that. <laughs> the places where I lead it don't look like this. God said, you need to examine yourself, boy. You need to test yourself and you need to make some adjustments. So what will happen to you when you're a child? You over that. Move on. Lead. I know you didn't like what your daddy did, but your father was in your life for a reason and he didn't play no games with you. And you're where you are because of it. No, you didn't like some of the discipline. And no, you didn't like the whippings, but look where you are as a result of it. He gave you some discipline. And no, you didn't get to go hang out with the boys on the, in the hood. No, you had a curfew. No, you couldn't bring a girl home to your house. And yes, he, they didn't let you talk to girls on the phone. Absolutely, you got an attitude because they had some boundaries. And now you want to bring that hurt to the church. Get over it. Create boundaries. If they like it, they'll keep them. If they don't, they can go somewhere else. But my church need to look like your house. In Cali, I got palm trees. God, like, where my palm trees at? Where my palm trees? How you got all that? My house don't look like that. How my house got uh, scar, uh, 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 marks all on them and people ain't painting after it? How I got the car? The lowest carpet you could buy is in your in the church. Why I don't have good carpet here? Why, why do I not have the money? Why why does my house not look like? Because I put so-and-so over and I don't want to say nothing because I say something, they're going to get an attitude and they're going to miss church for the next. He said, let them go. But may my place look the way it's supposed to look. You let me deal with them. I'm going to deal with you. And so examine yourself. <laughs> examine yourself. This ain't got nothing. I ain't preaching this to you. I'm talking to Eric Thomas. I'm showing you what I heard this week. Lead. <laughs> you know how to do it. Do it. I'm not telling you, I'm not preaching to you. I'm telling you what God told me. You got a daughter watching you. You got a son. They see the difference. They hear the conversations. My kids in Italy because of told, because CJ got on that boy and had, CJ got on that boy so much, fat can't hardly stand CJ. She can't stand his guts. But I'm going to tell you this, she loved the lifestyle they living now. Why? Because he... Because CJ, didn't, he didn't play this or this. It was this. And with a lot of y'all in here, I'm playing this. We ain't playing that no more. <laughs> We're going with the... <laughs> There's no reason it should be 30, 10, 20 people coming here every week. There's no reason. No reason this place... There's no reason. So we're going to go, let's go over the four again real quick. Oh, stop. Before we go there, hey, look, you may have an A in one area in faith, but fitness, you may have a... Family, you may have a, but finance, you got a. Huh, examine yourself. Go back to the scripture for me. I'm going to let y'all get out of here. And listen to me. Please do me a favor. Don't, don't do that. I had one of my workers call me and was like, I heard your sermon. Listen to me. If, I'm, if I was talking to you specifically, I would have called you. Like, don't do this sermon like this. Don't, do, don't let the devil do you like that. Don't let the devil make you take it personal. Then you got an attitude. You take out of it what you're supposed to be taking out of it. Examine yourself. I don't examine my daughter no more. She's 25. She grown. She grown. I ain't got to be examining her. She grown. My son, 28. He grown. They don't need my examination. They don't need me to tell them what to do and what not to do. If I did what I was supposed to do, they're going to be all right. And if I didn't do what I was supposed to be, they're going to be all right. 
Why? Because the God that when I was homeless that looked after me is the same God that's looking out for them. So I'm going to need you to examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. And from now on, saints, let's use this. There's somebody in this church that I love, and I told them, I love you, I respect you, I, I, I love your integrity, but we're not doing this no more. The integrity that you have when it comes to other people, you give them a pass. Or you, 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 you make excuses for them. We're not doing that no more. We're using the same lever. And if people don't want to go, you got to go. Why? Because if, if you build a house and you don't build it like this, Jamie, you take the last words. Why is this so important, Jamie? You take the last word. And then this little laser boy you done gave me. <laughs> Talk to me, Jamie. Hey Amen. So, like, the level is a standard. It's, hmm. It is the absolute standard. It's used every day. If we start a job at the foundation, we use the level. We go home for the day, come back the next day. Even though we know it was level, we still start with the level. And it's, it's very important. So you have, that is the rubric. That's the baseline for every day until you complete. And then when you complete, you show the level at the end to the client. You show it, you show it to yourself to know that you've met the requirement as you continue to build as you continue to go up, no matter what level you're on, you're always going to be level. If you start level and you continue to examine on a daily, weekly, hourly basis, I don't know how often my level is used, but it's used in a day. I might use a level on one thing 40 times. And so when you go to the next level, you get that laser, the AI, as Pastor called it earlier, you get that laser to where you understand it's so important that you don't want to be responsible for holding it wrong. So you get an automated laser level mm. and it will level itself. Mm. And the only responsibility for you to do is to make sure every day you turn it on, make sure you got the batteries in it and make sure that it's operating at its full capacity. That level could be leaning to the side and it will adjust itself and it will beep until it tells me, Jamie, I'm straight. So you can build to that. So it's a requirement, it's a baseline, it is the standard for construction. And I need to now use it in my life. So Good. thank you, Pastor. Good. So as, as we leave, I'm going to say it one more time because I want to make sure I'm clear. God says, as you move forward, use the level. Don't use your feelings. Listen to me. I love it when somebody called me and be like, Bro, your video wasn't, I didn't hear the sound, your video wasn't. And I'm like, bro, you just saw Toad. Like, bro, I have access to the best videographers in the world. I chose you because I wanted to make sure your family ate. And then you messed around and didn't do. And now you're saying, E, you can't get your big God said, don't, don't, don't hire people for feelings no more and paying people's bills. Pay people because they own this level. It's not like I don't have access. Somebody came up to me the other day, E, can you do click funnels for it? I said, why would I have you do it when Russell Brunson just brought me here and he the number one? I'm going to have Russell do my click funnels from now on. I'm not worried about putting money in your pocket no more. Because some kind of way when I put money in your pocket and it mess up, it's my fault. <laughs> some kind of way when I hire you and pay you, but you don't do what you're supposed to do, it's my fault. I got access to the best. I'm telling the best no because I'm trying to make sure you eat. God said, don't do that no more. Don't play with me no more. If you're going to put my stuff up, I need it to be done. Because it represents me. So, so if the people you're giving the opportunity to can't do this, then they got to go. And I only need the best doing my stuff. Why? Because you represent who I am. Y'all think, think people following Deion Sanders just because he's Deion Sanders? They following Deion because he's the best. He was the best when he... He was the best when he played baseball. He was the best when he played football. He played both ways. Now he got his sons playing. You think people going to Colorado, the baby there, you think he ain't praying, you think he, he ain't a, he a real, all he putting up is Christian stuff. But the reason why his stuff is hidden, because his stuff is hidden. I'm telling you, do me a favor. Some of y'all in this room, I'm telling you, your biggest problem is you know how to examine, but you examine everybody else. You're not examining yourself. You know what everybody else is doing wrong and what they need to do right, but you don't know what you're doing wrong and what you need to do right. And blessings don't come from changing other people. Blessings come from changing. I promise you I ain't playing. I heard a lot of stuff this week. <laughs> I heard God. I wouldn't know, no, oh, I can't believe. I'm like, yep, I heard exactly what you said. And I'm about to do it because I know how to do it. 
but I've been considering your feelings too long and those days are over. We about to do what's right because I know what's right, but I'm sick and I care more about your feelings than I care about God's vision. But thank you because you just, you, just, you just helped me. <laughs> Jamie, you just helped me to cut this boy off. I ain't even you. Thank you for the conversation because you just helped me. Yep, got it. And as you correct me, I hope you correct yourself because if you don't, I will be fixed. I will get my stuff together. I'm going to say it one more time so you can hear it plainly. I will, I will take correction and I will make the adjustments. And you give me six months to a year, you're going to see, you're going to see that I wasn't talking. You're going to see the correction. The question is, are you going to make the correction? That's the question. For those of you in the room today, are you going to make the adjustments? Because God going to show you. He going to give you the exam. Are you willing to do what the test says and not take it personal? You're in the room right now. you like, God, I got to start because <laughs> I haven't been. Some of this stuff I'm doing is my feelings. Some of this stuff is my personal perspective. It ain't. And I want to get to this. You're coming right now. You're coming right now. You and God are having a conversation. I want to go. I want to go here. I want to get out my feelings. I want to get out my personal perspectives because I'm more interested in the outcomes than I have my feelings. Oh, come on, somebody. This ain't for everybody. You don't got to get up. This ain't for everybody. This ain't for everybody. This is, pastor is corrected first. I got, I got the correction this week. Praise God. I'm just telling you I'm doing this. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. I ain't talking about nobody else. I ain't, I ain't trying to fix nobody else. That's not my job. I'm trying to fix Eric Thomas. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know what the standard is, and I'm going to start using it. Good. Of this group right here, I just want to make sure I know who I'm talking to. Who in this group, you don't know what the standard is, and you do need help learning the standard. Raise your hand. Don't worry. I got you. Yeah, that's why I asked. Thank you. I got it. Praise God. So I need uh, some support to make sure that we get these names. They were very honest. I, we need the standard. I promise you, I need to stay. I, there's some stuff I needed to know economically that I didn't know. Hey Amen. Raise your hand one more time. I need to know the standard. I need to know the standard. Praise God. I need to know the standard. I don't know it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're raising your hand. I know the standard. I already know what the standard is. I just haven't necessarily been doing it for one reason or another. You raise your hand with me. I know the standard. I just need to do, I need to get all this other stuff out my head and my heart so I can do the standard. I just be loving folks. So sometimes because I love them, I want to go with them and I don't want to make them unhappy. I want us to have, I'm just being real. I'd rather have a good relationship than have disruption. So sometimes I'm not going to do what's right just because I want us to be cool. I want us to be on one accord, no more. The relationship is not the standard. The standard is the standard. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to make sure we got the names down before we go into prayer. Do we get the names down? You're watching online. Take the tech. Do you need to be up here? Come on. Do you need to? There's some decisions you're making. You know it ain't right. There's some things you're doing financially. It's not right. There's some stuff you say. You know it's not right. But because of whatever your reason is, You'd rather make that the standard than God's standard the standard. And today, we stop doing that. Why? Because we're not even happy with the results when we do that. We're not even well. I'm just being real. A lot of times I lose as a pastor pleasing folk. I don't even win. I don't win. God don't win. And I'm done. We gonna, we gonna, as of today, we're going to start doing what's right. We got it? You want me just to raise the hands again? Or did we get the names down? We got them? All right, first group, they say they want your hands one more time. You don't know the standard, and you want us to help you teach you the standard so you know the standard. They're going to do a video. They want to make sure they got you. You don't really know the standard like that, and you want to learn the standard. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're online, just put your name on right now. Put, I need to know the standard in chat, and we're going to get to you as well. Did we get it? We good? We got it? We got everybody? Okay, kids, say make sure where your camera's focused. You know, she don't think you got her. Yeah, you don't got her with the way your camera is. 
Amen. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm just so grateful, Lord, that none of what you do is out of anger or bitterness or none of that. You're trying to correct us because you love us. That's it. It's all. It's called discipline. That's it. It's not. You only discipline those you love. And so we have had certain issues, whether it be our childhood or certain experiences we have, and it's caused us not to do right and not to follow the standard, whether we know the standard or don't know the standard. And as of today, we're just saying, we're just going to do the standard. We're going to do what's right. I'm going to do right by you, God. I know, I know what excellence looks like. I just left Italy with Montclair. I know with Pharrell. I know what <laughs> Pharrell said. He don't want to do it. Toby, you do it. I know what excellence. I saw my kid. I saw it. We were there. I, I know excellence. I've been to Abu Dhabi. I know what the temple is. I've seen excellence. I've been to the five-star resort. I know what excellence looks like. And you showed it so we could bring it back to the church, not so I could just take it and do it in my own personal life because I'm scared to hurt somebody's feelings. No, Lord, those days are over. I make a commitment to you and in front of your people to lead. And sometimes it's not going to be a democracy. And sometimes people are not going to be happy with the decisions I made, like COVID, but we got to make them anyway. And whatever the consequences are, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the thing that we shall all long for is to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over what I asked you to do. And as a result of that, I'm going to bless you. So we love you, Lord. We love this church. We love, Lord, who you've decided uh, to have at this church. And we just pray moving forward, we do what's right. And that we would make your house and your ministry a priority. It doesn't mean get abused. It doesn't mean to forsake our family and our responsibilities. But it does mean to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things shall be added. So I thank you for the rebuke this week. For anybody watching that might have felt the same rebuke, we pray that we would embrace it and we would use it accordingly in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, I know that took a little longer, but give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.